What is up, it's your boy Johnny Shreve, AKA Mr. Tell Like It Is. Today guys, we're responding to Jesse James' video. I investigated women on steroids. Now this is a good video, guys. Again, this is those kind of videos we need to look at to kind of raise awareness. Now again, when it comes down to these videos, I'm not here to tell you what you can and cannot do. I know damn well, very clearly, that people do whatever they want to do. That's it. My goal is with my experience, it's like this. I have experience with this type of fire. In this type of fire, I've seen burn people, and actually kill them as well too. And I got experience with that fire. In some places this fire is legal, in other places this fire is illegal. So if you want to test this fire, you go right ahead because you might get burned, you could possibly die, but in some places it is 100% illegal and you will be criminally charged. It's simple. The last video I did, man, it went over people's heads. It's pretty crazy. It's it's crazy how much people have blind loyalty to their favorite influencer. And I'm here to tell you guys, I do not want you to treat me that way whatsoever. I really appreciate the support you guys give me 100%. I see the comments. I recognize them. Thank you. But I want you to be your own person still. I want you to still question things that I say. Not everything I say is completely right. Now I'm not saying I'm out here giving you guys careless advice. I do my due diligence, I have experience, I have education, and my goal is to give you the best advice to help you live a longer, healthier, more quality of life. That is my goal. But I still want you to question things. I don't want you to be like, man, Johnny is so cool, I like the guy, man, he seems like a straight shooter. I'm gonna listen to everything he says. What I'm saying right now applies to this video and my last video. Anyway, Anyway, Jesse James is a is a is a nice ass dude. He's not gonna ruffle any feathers here. But we have to understand, guys. These women are doing illegal drugs because I'll tell you right now. If you're a bodybuilder who's competing at the IFBB, you do not have a prescription. That means you're doing super physiological amounts of steroids. Let me just break this down for you. When you're doing physiological amounts of steroids, that means that your testosterone is in the healthy range. Okay. When when all markers in the healthy range. That will kind of like, that is a directly correlated to you living a longer life. But when one of those markers decides to get out of that range, it can affect your health. So when you're doing super physiological amounts of steroids, that means that your testosterone is no longer in that hormone replacement range or even in the healthy range. That means it's out of the healthy range. When it's out of the healthy range, what happens? All the other markers are out of the healthy range as well too. That means that it's starting to be detrimental to your actual health and longevity of your life. Let's go. Guys, I am so terrified of someone getting mad at me asking Natty or not. Here, I just feel like women definitely care and I'm terrified to ask them, but I'm gonna do it, okay? Please subscribe. Natty or not. Do you think I'm Natty? I just have to ask. I'm like 200 pounds. I can't assume, okay? I'm sorry, like, let's be serious. It's not the weight that gives away the natty nod. It's the lower voice. If you're a female bodybuilder in the pro league, you're not natty. 100%. No, I'm not on steroids. Okay, I thought- <laughs> I was like a lot different, right? Are you on steroids? I am not on steroids. Loud and proud, natty baby. Let's go, do I look like I'm on steroids? No. Here's the differences between men and women in society when it comes to steroids. If you walk up to a woman and be like, are you on steroids? She's gonna be offended because she's not on steroids. It's like, what the heck, you think I'm looking like a man? If you walk to most men and be like, hey, are you on steroids? Or, or someone guesses and they're like, no, he's not on steroids. You kind of a compliment, right? It's, it's kind of a compliment when you're not on steroids and someone thinks that you are. It becomes not a compliment when you start being accused of it when you actually aren't on steroids. That's the thing. But when it comes to as a woman, you have to understand that this is what you're signing up for. And most women don't think that. Most women think, not me, they don't say anything, right? They don't, they, uh, I'm just doing bikini. I'm just doing this class. It's just women's bodybuilding that has all the side effects. It's like, no, all of you guys, most likely the higher classes when it comes to the amount of muscle that's needed to be a successful bodybuilder. But let's be serious, nobody's safe. Everyone's gonna get burned at least. I'm on just TRT from a okay. doctor. What has that experience been like? It helped me, but I'm naturally very much overweight and worked out a long time, couldn't figure out why I wasn't losing weight. Then I got my blood drawn and I needed TRT. Okay, so listen here, guys. Look, all right, men and women have testosterone. Men just have more. That's the kind of thing that separates us at the most basic way of explaining things. Now, if your test is too low, as both men and women, it will 100% affect your ability to lose fat. It will, but you can take care of some other things, especially as a woman, to help you lose fat before jumping on HRT. And let's be serious, HRT to take care of fat loss and then it affects your voice, you're taking more than you need. Like I understand getting on testosterone to help with certain things that are being slowed down like fat loss, but let's be serious. If the TRT you're starting to take is giving you side effects, 
it's not TRT. Like, let's stop saying TRT like it's some like new way of being like, uh, I'm just doing TRT. No, 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 you're doing steroids. If you're on TRT and you're gaining super physiological amounts of muscle, you're not on TRT. If you're a woman and doing TRT and your voice gets lower, you're not on TRT, you're not at all. TRT is the actual dose that keeps you within the physiological ranges of the healthy physiological ranges. Once you start getting outside of that, these super physiological amounts, that's when you start getting side effects. There she is. What's up, dude? Hello, hello. Your quads are insane. Good to see you. This is Hunter Henderson. She's competing at the Olympia for the first time this year. And oh yeah, she's definitely on steroids. I respect all sports, all competitors. I do. Especially as a bodybuilder, and I would say I've played, you know, other sports as well too, but when it comes to bodybuilding, I understand how hard it is to become a top bodybuilding. I respect the grind. I have to because I've, it's not like I, I'm obligated to, but because I've experienced it myself, this shit is not easy at all. Not even close. But you have to understand that there's trade-offs. There's trade-offs in this and there's different trade-offs for men than there's women. And they're quite obvious. When a man does steroids, a man is taking what he already produces and then taking way more of it to give him way more of what he already is. If he has some, you know, male pattern baldness, hey, men who are gonna lose hair anyway, gonna lose hair anyway. So when you see someone with a little bit of, you know, their hair losing hair a bit, when you see a man lose his hair, you're like, nah, that happens. It just, when you take steroids, it's just gonna exacerbate it. Or that person's, you know, that male's jaw gets more square, it's just a male. His jaw's gonna get more square. Or if he starts growing a little more hair on his face, or if he starts getting a little bit of pimple, it's a, it's not as shocking to us when it's a male because a male is just basically looking more and more like a male. Is it good or bad? Not necessarily when it comes to bodybuilding because in the end, we all look like muscular freaks. But when it's a woman, there's a massive trade-off and that trade-off is your femininity. That's just a hundred percent. So it's like, yeah, okay, cool. We can always show admiration for someone's, you know, drive and their success, but there's a trade-off. Like every sport has a trade-off. Like it's an easy one I can explain, it'll be football. Football has a massive trade-off. It's called CTE. You get a scholarship, your trade-off could possibly be your brain health. And then you continue and you end up going to the league, your trade-off is six figures a year, right? Two millions. And the trade-off is your head health. Maybe, you know, tearing your ACL, your shoulder or whatever. Those are things that happen, those are possibilities. There's a trade-off. Unfortunately, as a bodybuilder, there's a trade-off. You're trading your health for a little bit of money and a medal or a trophy. My hey. coaches are like super health conscious. Okay, good. I've had coaches in the past who were not. And what, they push you too far? Um, they got me where I needed to be. Switch that around. Instead of they saying health conscious, it should be like, they don't gamble with my health as much. That's what they should be saying. Because when you're doing this kind of stuff with women and you don't know them as much, you're gambling. And I realized I don't know anything about how steroids affect women. I decided it was time to talk to an expert, ideally someone who researches female health, specifically female athlete health. So I'm a doctoral researcher in the area of women's health, specifically though, female athlete health, and my research is on female steroid use. There's something I have a little bit of a problem with. When I see certain, you know, um, doctors or like influencers, women, that advocate for women doing steroids, they most likely have the side effects of the thing that they're talking about that women need to be, you know, healthier or whatever. She's an advocate of women using steroids, but it's like in sports. Okay, cool, but you are, you have a clear side effect of what you're preaching. She's basically justifying what she's doing by making it out to be that, you know, women, I do, I study women doing steroids healthy. Why do you think men are judged less harshly for taking steroids compared to a woman taking steroids? Probably because the misconception that testosterone is the male hormone whenever men and women both have testosterone and estrogen. Men take steroids, it makes them look more like a man. Women take steroids, it makes them look more like a man. The amounts that this woman is doing, Henderson, or most female bodybuilders in general, they're literally transitioning. I'm gonna be straight up with you. It's a transition, but the difference is they don't wanna become a man. Most women bodybuilders, when it comes to like the entire sport with women, none of them are going in. I would say there's maybe 1% that are like, I wanna transition into a man. There'll be 1%, less than 1% that are going into bodybuilding and being like, oh great, I'm gonna do women's bodybuilding because it'll be easier for me to transition into a man. No, like that's just not that many, but you're literally doing that. You are literally doing just that. You're transitioning at a slow rate. 
And depending on what class you're in and how much you abuse the steroids, you're gonna exacerbate those effects even more and then eventually have transition. The only difference is, is surgery. Some women have higher levels of androgens naturally. Some men have higher estrogens naturally. Now, does that mean that a man is more feminine because their estrogens are high? Well, walk around at the Olympia this weekend and I bet you there's some guys walking around with higher estrogen levels than a lot of the women there. But then why are we saying when women have high androgens, they're more manly? Well, it's because of what we've associated with, AKA the side effects. That's exactly it. Again, when the side effects that happen to a man, the worst side effects that happen to a man is obviously like, you know, testosterone shut down. So basically hypogonadism, you know, they don't produce testosterone anymore or they end up getting too much estrogen and they end up getting gynecomastia. Or some big ones that are pretty crappy for men. When you look at like women, your side effects are literally becoming a man. Your voice gets lower, your clitoris gets longer. Your breast tissue is gonzo. You're starting to be shaped more like a man. Your, your female traits are disappearing because you're putting a male hormone in you. That is the difference. Have you had any side effects from not being natural? I've just had an easier time recovering and building muscle, okay, so. Okay. She's in denial. Have you had any side effects? No, just uh, you know, having an easier time to recover. What about your voice? You're gonna tell me that that's your voice as well too? Like, here's a problem with it too. There's some people that are just in denial of it. We would have a better overall understanding when it comes to steroid awareness if the people that were doing steroids were just honest about it. And that's why, I made the video I did with the Doc Mike one. Because we need to be honest about steroids. We need to be honest about what's gonna happen with steroids. We need to be honest about if you wanna compete as a pro bodybuilder, what actually happens as a pro bodybuilder. We glamorize professional bodybuilding like it's signing a contract for the NFL. Most people when they do steroids, especially young cats that are coming up, men and women are online watching Young LA, you know, watching Gymshark. They're watching the guy, the top people that actually are going around with all these sponsorships. And like, if I do steroids and I get into bodybuilding, this is eventually gonna be me and I can be that person. Do you understand that it's like this, this many people of the IFBB, of the Professional Bodybuilding League, that are actually successful in terms of like making money on their own and from the sport and from sponsorships? It's like this. It's like the smallest amount of people that are there. So you understand that there's, what are the trade-offs? I'm here not to say don't do it. Think before you decide that you're gonna go on steroids. Let's put things in perspective here. Like the Mr. Olympia, bikini, there was 50 women on stage. 50 women, only five get paid. That means 45 people got no money. So the 50 that made it there beat the other hundreds of women that didn't make it. That's bikini. Understand this. This is the trade-off we're talking about. The trade-off is your femininity for possible for possibly making money. What are some side effects that you've experienced from taking steroids? Um, me personally, enlargement, which is awesome, as long as it's not like, as long as it's not like walking around, you know? Like, just Why is it awesome? I'm well, just asking. First of all, everybody can find it. Here's the problem when it comes to bodybuilding, right? And this is the most truest thing of them all. Every single bodybuilder gets to a point in their career where they're like, I can't do this anymore. Every one of us do. Every single one of us stop bodybuilding. It's not because, well, you know, it's, it's been bodybuilding for so long, man, I'm done. It's like, no, they, they get a moment of clarity where it's like, this isn't healthy and I wanna live longer. So they stop, they stop, we all stop, we all do. And then we're left with this transition into the world. Because again, now I am nowhere near the way I looked before, but I'm a man. And to be honest, I look better being off stairs. I look younger, my skin's healthier, I can move better. I'm still the same size when I was playing football. I'm 210 pounds actually. I'm seven pounds smaller than I was when I started playing college football at 24 years old. We all come to the point where we are done and we wanna do something else because this isn't healthy. And us men are left with, hopefully, our health. But what happens when it comes to a woman? Does she get any of those things back? No, she doesn't. So the girl bragging about her clitoris, the only one liking that is gonna be some guy who has a fetish with big clits. It sounds bad, but it's true. When women are done, because just like us men, when we get to the point where like, I don't wanna do this anymore, Women have to do it as well too. And what are they left with? They're left with everything that steroids gave them. Is it worth it? And that's the point I'm making to anybody. This is the ugly side of it that you're gonna have to experience. You're either gonna get burned or it burns you to death. And in some places, both of them while being criminally charged possibly. And guys, listen, there's the angle of this that I don't talk about as much. And that's like the, 
the need to be a champion, that striving to want to be a champion. And that's great, a lot of times, right? And I can see this woman probably went into this, wanted to be a champion. But I can promise you that no one came up to her and said, to be a champion, this is what's gonna happen. And when it comes down to the most part, when it, even for myself, I want to become a fresh body because I want to become a pro because I have a, a massive competitive side of me. I love to compete. I want to compete. I want to be a champion. That's all I've been doing my entire life. I played sports and sells the youngest and all the way up. So I love being competitive. But when it comes to this, no one's saying, by the way, your pursuit to being a champion is going to cost you this. It's gonna cost you. I can guarantee you, Mrs. Henderson, when she got into powerlifting and bodybuilding, no one said to her, hey, by the way, your pursuit to becoming a champion and your use of steroids is gonna make you pee every time that you strain to lift something. You're gonna have a lower voice. Your skin's gonna be bad. You're gonna lose your hair. You're gonna have a deeper voice and you're gonna have a longer clip. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure you guys like and subscribe. And guys, check it out. If you are stuck in your fitness journey and you don't know where to go, or you've made good improvements, but you don't know how to make it sustainable, hit the link in the description below, johnnystreetfitness.com, fill the application out, jump on a 50 minute video call with me and we go over your goals and see what we can achieve together. Till next time, you know how it is. Iron Chef is Iron, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep gym chasing. Peace.